Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Stock Market News Weekly Recap, number six episode ever in history, recapping the February 24th week, 2017. And we're going to do like we usually do. We're going to look at how the markets did this week. We're going to, I'm going to pick out a few stocks that went up the most and down the most this week. We're going to look at the biggest stories that happened this past week, and we had a few of them, guys. And then we're also going to look at what to look for in the upcoming week, guys. So I cannot wait to share this with all you guys today. Hit a thumbs up if you enjoy this, guys. Let's get right into it. So first off, the markets, how did they do? The Dow Jones had another, another strong week, up almost 1%. We had the NASDAQ up. 0.1%, so a little weak for the NASDAQ this week. In the S&P 500, up about 0.7%. Guys, the markets are just are in a really good place right now. It just, it seems like every week I do this show, which is, this is a six week we've done it, it seems like every week it's like up, you know, and the markets are just doing very well overall throughout the year. I mean, you can look at how much they're up year to date, and it's, it's quite amazing considering we're not even two months into the year and how much they're already up, guys. So we're off to a strong start here in 2017. Uh, let's check out and see some of the biggest movers this week. So, RH, Restoration Hardware, moved up over 17% this week. Today alone, it moved up 24%. I'm so pissed about this one. I wanted to buy this stock, and I wanted to, I was actually going to add it to the three stocks I'm buying now video uh, for, for the month of March. I was actually going to kick out Under Armour. I was going to add RH. Uh, but now I'm going to probably keep Under Armour as a third stock. Maybe I'll replace it with something else, but I'm not sure yet. But RH was going to be the replacement, and I was going to start adding shares of RH, but now it's up like 24% today, and I'm like, mm, not as interested in that one anymore, guys. So anyways, that stuff happens sometimes. And they weren't even supposed to report numbers. They preliminary came out with numbers. They weren't even supposed to report. They just came out and said, you know, the numbers they did and whatnot. <sighs> The next stock up that went up a lot this week, we had Lumber Liquidators up 13% this week. This is a flooring company. They had a lot of issues the past year or two with the, some illegal chemicals they were using or whatever that came from China. A lot of issues were with that company. They had a strong week, though. Southwestern Energy was down 15% this week. They're an oil and natural gas company. Anything oil and natural gas related, it's tough business right now. Texas Roadhouse, one of my favorite restaurants uh, <laughs> I used to like to go to a lot. Uh, they went down 30 13% this week. So they were a big mover down, guys. So that covers some of the biggest stocks that went up and down the most this week. And that also covers how the markets did. Let's look at some of the biggest stories this week. So biggest story that caught my eyes this week was the U.S. exported a record amount of crude oil, topping one or topping a million barrels a day for the second week and filling the gap in the world's markets created by the OPEC cutbacks. Shale and other U.S. producers sent 1.2 million barrels of crude oil onto the world markets last week, up nearly 200,000 barrels a day, guys. 200,000 barrels from a week earlier of about 350,000 barrels above the four-week average. This is absolutely amazing, guys. Absolutely amazing. So just the fact that the U.S. were exporting, exporting oil at all in that that amount of oil, it is mind-blowing to me, guys, because it was 10 years ago that we were basically completely oil-dependent, and it was all before fracking came along. Fracking completely changed the game, guys. That's the way technology does it nowadays, guys. You can go from being screwed to just being uh, in a great situation, which is what the United States is because of the fracking technology. We are so less dependent. We're not dependent at all on the Middle East countries for their oil now, guys. It's absolutely phenomenal. So something else I want to point out here with this whole uh, OPEC and oil deal, and it has to do with the oil price, which affects all companies and affects every consumer and every person watching this, right? Well, OPEC, which is basically, basically most of the Middle Eastern countries and a few other countries and whatnot, and that are very oil rich, right? They're in a catch-22 here, guys. They're, they're screwed either way. It's like the knife slicing them both ways because if they up their production, what's going to happen to the price of oil? It's going to drop dramatically, which will then hurt them all. 
If they cut production, what happens is the, the price of oil goes up some, but then the U.S., who is not an OPEC, they just say, hell, well, let's start, let's start drilling even more oil, and more oil companies come online here in the United States because they're like, we can make a profit, even if it's only five, ten bucks a barrel, who cares? We produce, you know, $100,000, or $100,000, 100,000 barrels a day, that's great for us. So OPEC is really screwed, guys. They're in a bad situation that they're, they really can't control. They really can't control it, guys. So it's totally changed the game of, of where oil is going long term and short term as far as pricing goes, guys. So that's the biggest story that caught my eyes. Number two biggest story was Tesla reported numbers. Good old Tesla. You know, I know I love Tesla. I do not. I'm not a shareholder of Tesla. I don't own a Tesla, but I think the company's onto some great things. So they reported some just phenomenal numbers here, guys. Q4 Model S and X orders reach record highs, and that's orders, not production. Orders reach record highs. Model 3 on track for initial production in July, volume production by September. So we're looking at about six months, seven months till they have volume production. Battery cell production started at Giga Gigafactory number one. That's a really good sign for them. All Tesla vehicles in production have hardware necessary for full self-driving. This is a huge competitive advantage for these guys. Uh, Solar City and Groman uh, integrations underway. Q4 or excuse me, Q3 to Q4 cash increased by over $300 million to $3.4 billion. That's a great sign. 2016 revenue up $7 billion, or excuse me. Uh, 2016 revenue of $7 billion, up 73% from 2015 here, guys. That is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. A few other metrics I want to look at here in regards to Tesla, guys, was the vehicle production number here, guys. They went from twenty. They went from 14,000 vehicles in December 31, 2015 period to now almost 25,000 vehicle production. So that's a 77% increase. So that's awesome. They're getting production online. Vehicle deliveries was up 27% year over year. So that's absolutely phenomenal, guys. So Tesla's really doing some amazing things here. And then last thing we have is the solar roof, which is their whole new um, acquisition of Solar City. Here they say, we are working to make solar energy generation even more compelling with improved products and even better value with our acquisition of Solar City Complete. We plan to reduce customer acquisition costs by cutting advertising spending by selling solar products in Tesla stores. That is freaking really smart. And shifting from leasing to selling solar energy systems. So that's a, you know, this is kind of proving how smart, well, and of course it's a long way to play out, but this is how smart of an acquisition this is. Because instead of having to spend so much on advertising Tesla, now they can just go ahead and say, you know, let's sell those products right in the Tesla store. So now not only can you go into a store to buy a Tesla, if you're interested in Tesla or look at that, you can also go in there and buy a new roof if you want a new solar roof, guys. So really good things at Tesla. Just the numbers were great overall. I believe the stock did drop on the earnings, but... You know, it's hard with these stocks that basically are losing money because Tesla is losing money at the end of the day. They're spending so much. If they cut back on spending, obviously they could make a profit. But if they cut back on spending, then they wouldn't be what Tesla is trying to go for, which is the dominant auto player in the United States and most of the developed world. Now, another company that reported earnings was Home Depot. They reported some great numbers and they, their stock went up. They reported EPS of $1.44 a share versus $1.34 a share uh, was what analysts were expecting. They did $22.21 billion versus analysts expecting $21.8 billion. Comparable store sales, a 5.8% increase. That's phenomenal versus a 3.7% increase. That's probably the most impressive thing, comp store sales. Anybody that's worked in retail or is an investor in retail, you guys under, probably understand how, how hard it is to get comparable store sales to go up, especially when you're an established retailer like Home Depot is, guys. Phenomenal numbers, the housing market, you know, coming online and really becoming a very good thing here in the United States. You know, the housing market's fairly strong right now. When the housing market's fairly strong, when people feel good about their housing prices, guess what they go out and do? They go out and spend money to improve that house even more, buy new countertops and floors, all those kinds of things. And a lot of them are doing it at Home Depot, obviously, guys. So really strong numbers there. Walmart reported numbers. They actually did way better than I expected. Walmart impressed me. I'll just be straight up about that. Walmart US Q4 sales grew 1.8%. 
And Walmart US e-commerce GMV grew 36%, guys. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So Walmart is is they're they're getting better at trying to fight Amazon. They're in a tough situation with Amazon right now because Obviously, Walmart's so physical retail store driven and the world's going to online. So Walmart's trying to fight that and they're doing a pretty dang good job. I will say a 30% revenue growth, that is, or that's amazing to me that they did that type of number. I was not expecting that. But they got a long way to go if they want to really fight off Amazon. And they're, they're having a tough fight because not only like we talked about the physical stores and whatnot trying to move online, but also here's another big factor that not a lot of people think about. Walmart is a stock that has to keep their EPS around a certain amount. They can't just like all of a sudden cut back one year and say, well, we're not going to have a profit next year or something because the stock would get nailed. The stock would get hammered. It would get destroyed, guys, because a lot of value investors are invested in Walmart. They're not invested for, you know, a huge growth or whatnot. They're invested because it's a, a certain kind of PE that they're looking for and a certain kind of safety. If the company all of a sudden became non-profitable because they were spending so much, it would take away from the whole value proposition that shareholders look at. Whereas Amazon, they can get away with not making profit right now and losing money because who cares? You know, their their whole thing is growth and we're going to dominate retail online, guys. So Walmart's in a tough position, but they're fighting them off very well. So what are we looking for next week? Next week, we got a few things. Warren Buffett, he was releasing his annual letter actually tomorrow. So if you guys want to read that, it's I think the way he explains things is just phenomenal. I think also he has a great insight on uh, the total macroeconomics, not just in the United States, but around the world, because his company owns so many companies that are in so many different sectors, guys, that he really gets a, a full view every single day of his life of, of how the entire economy is doing in the United States and worldwide. So that's coming up. And also he's doing an interview on CNBC on Monday morning, very early Monday morning. It's going to be like a two or three hour interview. I love his interviews on CNBC. I almost watch him every single year. He usually does, he usually does two a year, maybe three a year, usually two a year though. They're phenomenal if you guys have never watched. We've got Target uh, reporting sale, uh, revenue numbers and EPS and all that good stuff, guys. They're coming out with their quarterly report. Target, we're going to get to see if they're fighting off Walmart and Amazon, how well they're doing there. We got Best Buy reporting numbers next week, seeing how the electronic sector is doing. And lastly, on Friday, we have Janet Yellen speaking, uh, getting her thoughts as uh, on the economy as a whole. If you ever watch Janet Yellen, she's probably the most boring person in the world to watch. But she's the, she's the head of the Fed, guys, so she's a very poor, important person to look to. And, you know, I can understand it being kind of boring. She's the head of the Federal Reserve. That's not probably the most exciting job in the world. But needless to say, she's going to be talking on Friday, doing a, you know, massive, uh, you know, talk that she does once a month. So you guys might want to look out for that and you can just kind of get some more macroeconomic trends. So between her talking and Warren Buffett talking, if you have any questions about the U.S. economy or world economy, they should be answered between those two talking this week, guys. So I hope you enjoy this episode number six ever in history, Stock Market News Weekly Recap. Hit a thumbs up if you did. If you just came across this video and I'm not subscribed yet, you may want to. We talk personal finance on the channel. We talk entrepreneurship. I'm an actual business owner. We also talk the stock market the most in the channel, including this series every single Saturday I post, guys. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you.